hot topic today. Dental insurance or no dental insurance? And how you get your treatment done? And even if you have insurance, it still doesn't cover it 100%. So let's talk today about dental insurances versus, versus no insurance, what options you have with either, and a little bit of education about both so that you know the right decision to make for you and your circumstance. Guys, my name is Becky Moore. I'm a dental hygienist of 30 years. I've had some management experience as well. And so I thought that coming to you today to talk to you about dental insurance and in-office plans might be very helpful to you. I'm with Restart Hygiene and I'm on a mission to educate every single person about the oral health of their mouth, uh, oral health is their mouth, whole body health, but also everything else that goes around it. So let's delve in. All right, so you have insurance, so you gotta use it, right? So there's a difference here whether you use an in-network provider or an out-of-network provider. What that usually means to you with most plans is that there's not a great big difference uh, as far as your co-pays. You're always gonna have a copay with insurance. Insurance does not pay 100% anymore unless it's a preventative plan that's a really good one. Even some of the preventative plans that I've seen or the uh, insurances, they don't pay for preventative at 100%. When I say preventative, I mean your hygiene visit, your cleaning, your bite wings, even the pictures we take up front, they don't always pay for those at 100% or your exam. If you have too many exams for the year, they won't cover that. So insurance has gotten really, really tricky and you have to be almost like a, a master, have a master degree, master's degree to be able to navigate. So if you have dental insurance, either find a provider that is in network or out of network based on your preference. Make sure the insurance will still cover out of network if you decide to choose one that's out of network. If you like your provider, I say stay with them. If it's manageable and you can see it, your provider that you like and takes care of you and you have that trust and uh, relationship, I would say stay there, but that's up to you. All right, so if you use your dental insurance, you have co-pays, right? So the three things that I always told my front desk to look for, number one, what is the patient's deductible? What is their yearly deductible? What do they have to pay up front first? It used to be 50, now they're, some of them are closing up to the $100 mark. So the $100, 50 to $100 is what you can expect most of the time. Number two, is your year a fiscal year, which is a mid-year, mid like some government entities are? Or does your year start every January? Do you get new benefits every January with your dental insurance? So those are two important things. The third thing is to know how much insurance will cover for you per person per year. So once you know what your year is, if it's a January year or a mid-year, a fiscal year, then what does insurance cover? Most of them now cover between $1,000 and $1,500. If you've got one that covers up to $2,000 worth of care per year, you're doing pretty darn good. So those are some things to look for as well. If you're buying insurance, like you're buying a new plan, look out for the waiting periods. I had one patient came in for a toothache, had an awful toothache. We ran his insurance and we found out that he didn't have any coverage for anything for a whole year. Nobody even told him he had to wait a year even to have a cleaning, an x-ray, or uh, a tooth pull. Well, that's really not fair. So make sure that you're really looking into all these fine details. The other thing with insurance is even if you've had it established for a while or haven't, if you need a big service done or even a filling, most insurances are only going to pay for you to get a filling done every two years. So if they paid for it at another dentist, but it was not a faulty one or didn't last, you go to a new dentist, they may not cover it if it hasn't been for two, it hasn't been more than two years. And they will ask these questions most of the time. If you need a crown done, a partial, a bridge, an implant, they are going to want to know when was that tooth extracted if you needed an implant. If they didn't extract it, they're likely not going to cover it. Some of insurances have exclusions where they will not pay for implants no matter what. Some of them will pay for implant crowns, but not the actual implant and the attachment. If it's not been more than five years and some are 10 on crowns and partials and dentures, they're not gonna pay. So make sure that you are looking at all these fine details. And it is responsibility of the office, the dental office that you're dealing with to make sure if they accept your insurance, they should be finding out. But you as a consumer, this is your benefit. We wanna make sure you know what your benefits are so that you don't get caught with your pants down. The other side of the coin is if you don't have dental insurance, what do you do? Because everything is expensive. Even having dental insurance is still expensive to have work done. What I would suggest doing is find a good dentist from some good references. See if it is agreeable to you. See if they give you a cash discount. Most dental offices will give you 5 to 10% off if you pay cash at time of visit. Number two, find one that has an in-office membership. 
This membership usually includes, for the year, the two cleanings, the two exams, your x-rays, and usually two fluoride treatments. And usually that will, will be cheaper to buy the membership plan than it would be for you to come and get those services done for those two visits. The other caveat to the membership plan is most of them will give you between 10 and 20% off for any additional treatment. So if you come in, you see the dentist, they say you need two fillings done, you will get 10 to 20% off of that for most plans. So see if that is something too that will benefit you. A lot of those membership plans, if you buy additional for your family members, they'll give you a little bit off. A lot of times it's 10 to 20% off as well. So that helps you to get your family covered, still get your dental care done. I know for me as a hygienist, if a patient's coming in, they don't have their limited funds, they don't want to have their x-rays done. Well, I understand that to a certain point, um, be, but we can't see below the gums. I don't have 2D imaging with my eyes, neither does your dentist. So we want to catch stuff when it's early. We, it, with x-rays, when you remember this, when you take an x-rays, you can see little dark spots in the enamel layers between the teeth with x-rays. And then we know what could be coming, so we can say, okay, we need to use more fluoride here. We want you to floss more. We want you to water pick. We can give you some suggestions as a preventative measure. If we don't take any x-rays, and you're saying, well, nothing's hurting. I don't need any x-rays. That's true, nothing is hurting. But do you want it to hurt before you know about it being there? I'd like to know ahead of time. And I'm not a big fan of x-rays either. Uh, 30 years ago, everybody was afraid of the radiation that you got. Uh, that is a concern. But now today, we stay in the room with you and we have our little nomad, our little uh, handheld machine. We don't even leave the room anymore. So radiation should not be an issue or a reason for not doing that. Not when you're in the sunshine, eating a banana, living in a brick building that you're not getting radiation as well. So remember those things. But I didn't mean to get off the subject. But insurance is not the end all and be all for dental. There are many restrictions. There are, they will try to get out of paying. A lot of times um, they will stick to the rules. The rigid, the rules are fairly rigid sometimes. And remember they're in a business to make money. They're there to help you as well. And it does help you to have your dental insurance. But there are very few that I've seen that pay for implants. So remember, remember that. There are waiting periods for insurances, especially if you buy a new plan. And uh, you don't have to have dental insurance to still get your dental care done. There are lots of offices that offer that membership plan, which I am so thankful for for the patients because it allows me to do what I need to do for you to do the preventive measures. So if you buy that plan, you can get your x-rays done the, each year, and that way nothing gets ahead of you. So we want to make sure that you're being taken care of, you're getting what you need, and we don't want you to have more expense, more pain, or more time at the dental office. So that's not fun for anybody. All right, so if you if this helps you, I hope it did. hope it gave you a clue in on something. If you have questions, put them below. If you like and subscribe, I'm building this channel. I'm trying to come up with more ideas that will help you with my dental patients and consumers. So please let me know. I'll be glad to help you. Becky Moore, Restart Hygiene.